So thank you again for being available. And uh, could you tell me a little bit about what your, what your research is, what interests you? So I work on uh, security and privacy. What I, uh, what I actually explore is um, trust structures, I would say. So I usually design systems, so that's usually called security engineering. Um, but I also study the, um, the way systems, existing systems are built um, and you know, try to find either um, some, uh, you know, let's say security flaws in their design or try to design secure, secure systems that provide the, uh, provably provide uh, certain security properties um, uh, along with uh, you know, certain operational uh, functionality. Okay, and uh, how far along are you in your studies now? So, currently I'm in my third year, so I'm doing my PhD in the UK, which means, you know, I should uh, more or less start, you know, writing up and conclude my PhD. Uh, I still have some time left, um, um, yeah, uh, I'm on my third year, so, you know, uh, my PhD is uh, almost towards uh, its end. Now, so far, is there anybody in particular who really inspired you in the work you're doing now? So. It's actually interesting because some of the people that uh, I've been reading their papers and you know they have those papers that uh, have been published maybe 20 or 30 years ago and they're still influential and you read them and you're like oh that's such a nice idea are actually here. So for instance Leslie Lamport I've read his papers and um, um, well the, the, the ideas um, are kind of um, you know you know they stand uh, over time so yeah absolutely. Um, several people, um, you read their papers and you're like, well, that's an amazing idea. And then um, you maybe even read the paper again after a few years and you're equally surprised how nice that is and you remind yourself uh, how much you liked it the first time. Had you met Dr. Lamport before? Um, no, it was my first time, so I came here and I was actually keen to meet him. Um, also, Kostadinos Daskalakis, I would like to meet, even though he's doing some research in a uh, slightly different area. You know, y you, you read about people and you, um, you either, um, you're attracted by their research, obviously, but also um, the way they, they you know, they, um, they made their uh, contributions. And so you, it's such a nice opportunity because you get to talk to them uh, and uh, find out more about them and also meet the people behind the papers, right? Did, so you did get a chance to actually talk with Dr. Lamport some Yes, I did, I did, yes. Uh, was there anything that surprised you, either about him or about his ideas when you actually met him? Well, I mean, it's always surprising because you're reading the papers and you somehow um, building up the, the whole character in your mind and then of course that doesn't correspond to reality but you know I was uh, p pleasantly surprised by all the people I spoke with they were you know um, yes this is work they did they're happy to talk about it but they have new things to tell you about so I spoke with uh, for instance um, uh, uh, the, the, uh, Dr. Hellman for instance and he um, now he's working on some other stuff uh, we had a very uh, long discussion yesterday on the boat trip about uh, what he's currently working on, exchange some opinions. I learned a lot, even though it's not necessarily um, on the things that I've been working on as part of my PhD, it doesn't really matter. It's just, you know, the whole process of exchanging ideas is very important. Yeah, I know he's working on world peace, uh, basically a disarmament. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I have an interest in those kind of things. It's certainly not the area of my PhD, but, um, you know, um, it's not very often that you find someone so knowledgeable, so I was able to, you know, um, do a sanity check for, for, some of, for some of my ideas on certain topics that I, I've been reading about, uh, and he told me his, what he thinks. It was, it was actually very nice. Um, I, I, I have to take a second because mostly, as I say, I've been talking with laureates and the questions for you are a little bit different. Um, well, tell me a little bit about your process for, for coming here, uh, how you decided to apply, uh, if anyone gave you encouragement and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, actually, I, I'm a good friends with two mathematicians that attended um, the years before. So they were very encouraging. Like uh, they, they came back, they were very enthusiastic about the whole thing and very excited about the whole experience. So they really prompted me to apply and helped me through the process. Um, um, I actually, I had them read my application and, uh, you know, um, give me feedback and uh, so I knew a little bit in advance what to expect but it's completely different when someone tells you about it and when you actually experience it so um, I just knew it's, it was nice based on their excitement but um, 
it's different when you come here and you experience it yourself. Well, could you go into that a little bit more. What, what did you expect? So um, I knew there were nice lectures and uh, nice lectures happen in lots of places. And also in theory, I knew that you would get to meet all those laureates and they were accessible for you to chat with them and also um, get to talk with lots of people that are from maths and computer science but don't necessarily study the same thing as you. But it's kind of unique in a sense because this doesn't happen elsewhere. So without prior experience, you don't know how that actually feels. So when you come here and you're surrounded by all those very smart people, um, each, each one of them is an expert in their particular area, particular field. So uh, one thing that happens straight away is you have to explain your research in people that are very smart but non-experts in what you do. So you, they often ask questions and they give you like feedback um, from a from an angle that you haven't thought of because, well, you interact with people that are more or less in your subfield of science. So that's the first thing that happens. And the second thing is, of course, you meet, you meet the laureates um, and they also have a different view, maybe kind of a higher um, overview of the whole uh, scientific field they're into. So they can, uh, they, their questions is again different. Uh, they, their feedback is again different. So, well, all these. Mm -hmm. um. So you mentioned Dr. Lamport, and um, I'm going to mispronounce his name, the, the new Fields medalist who's also from Greece. Uh, uh, Kostandinos Kostalakis, yes. Kostalakis, yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, was there anybody else that you met who, whose ideas surprised you or who really got you thinking? So um, we had the, I mean, actually, okay, the, the laureates, absolutely. Uh, what happened is the workshop I attended was very interesting. So I joined the machine learning, uh, one of the two machine learning workshops. So. Um, this was actually a very natural um, uh, discussion. Take a, a very natural discussion took place there uh, because it wasn't the laureates presenting, but then at the end of it there was approximately, I would say, half an hour of a discussion, and the laureates was actually were actually per actively participating. So, for instance, what I found very interesting is, well, um, I'm not an expert in machine learning, but I've been studying and trying to educate myself. You know, catch up, follow the field where it's going. Um, things that we've been doing in machine learning or you know, scientists have been doing in machine learning, to be more accurate, um, have been studied in, studied in um, uh, other fields of maths. So there was one laureate that apparently he was an expert, but he was using, um, um, he gave like a small, um, you know, impromptu uh, lecture at the end of that uh, workshop. And um, he explained that, well, certain things that we've been calling with a, sp a particular name or term, they've been calling it somehow else because it's a different, uh, you know, subfield of science. Um, so that was very interesting. And he also, uh, things that they've discovered already in his field uh, were directly applicable in machine learning. There was also, as part of that workshop, again, including the laureates and the young researchers, um, a very nice discussion about um, ethics and um, do we need um, machine learning to be transparent? How can it explain, um, uh, say you have a machine learning model taking some decisions, can it explain uh, the, you know, the rationale behind those decisions to us? And uh, if it does explain, um, would we be able to explain, uh, to understand um, what the explanation actually means, because it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be in a comprehensible for us language. So all this was a, yeah, a very um, insightful discussion. Did you, do you remember who that, uh, who that laureate was? Uh, no matter if not, I'm just curious. No, sorry, I'm very bad with names. It's I remember how he looks like, but I don't, I don't remember his name, sorry. It's OK. Um, let's say that somebody came to you, another researcher, somebody from back home, and said, I'm thinking of applying. What would you tell them? Yeah, they should definitely do. Um, it's, um, you know, what the, I, I will give the same advice that my, my mathematic, mathematician friends that prompted me to apply gave to me. Um, just be honest in your application. Look into you. It's a, actually, the process of applying is also very interesting because you have to look into uh, what you're actually interested in. Just write that. So um, what brought you into science? Why are you interested in attending? Uh, all those things. Um, they, they, 
maybe not by coincidence. They, I believe they make a good application for the, um, for the forum, but also they are useful to you as a researcher to somehow uh, take a step back and uh, realize wha what you're doing, why you're doing it, because sometimes we get too much into our research. We clearly enjoy it, but uh, it's always useful to take a step back and think, okay, what, what is it that I'm doing? Where is it that I'm, um, I wanna take my research towards to? Um, and yeah, this whole process, uh, I think this, um, um, you take a week off your research to essentially um, self um, uh, self inspect your um, your uh, your positioning within the whole field uh, where you are, um, and it helps a lot that people here are from um, neighboring uh, areas, but not from from your precise area of science. You know, it's interesting because this has come up a few times in our discussion: the idea of being deep into your subject and then getting a broader perspective. Um, and it sounds like, like this experience has given you a, a broader perspective, but still within the general area of, of math and computer science. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, also, what I've been thinking of, and clearly there is no right or wrong answer on that, is how do um, important scientific co contributions look like? So um, if someone wants to, you know, do impactful research, what are the kinds of problems he should look into? Um, I guess as a young researcher, you're usually forced in a sense to do um, some risk management. So you don't undertake uh, extremely risky projects because you know you want to get your PhD, you want to do well in your postdoc, you have a kind of a steady stream of publications coming out. Um, more risky projects, you may end up working on them for a few years and then in the end you don't know, you either end up go going to end up with um, you know, a very impactful uh, result or no result at all, or maybe an, an even a negative result. So um, by talking to other people who went to the, through this process, and clearly they, they, they fell on the, uh, on the right side, but this doesn't mean that they didn't have other projects that didn't actually uh, converge to where they expected to them to. Um, it's actually good to you know, extract some useful um, in, um, you know, conclusions from how you should manage your, ris uh, your risk, how you should structure your ris uh, research to be more efficient, and also enjoy life. That's also important. I think that's all I had to say. Was there anything else you wanted to add? Um, no, I think it was, um, yeah. I think I covered everything, Not, nothing in particular. Actually, what I was thinking this morning was uh, what I uh, just said about um, how do important scientific contributions look like, both in terms of how those problems look like and also how you should approach your, um, um, how you should structure your research to tackle these kind of challenges. Actually, I'd like to follow that just a little bit more because uh, it comes up sometimes, how much do you focus on your topic? And how, well, how much is it about the content of your topic and how much is it about the content of your character and how you live and how you approach problems and, and that sort of thing? Um, has being here affected your view on that in any way? Yeah, I was actually surprised by the, maybe I should have expected that, but I didn't. So um, lots of laureates had at least a small part in their talks where they, say, they stress the importance of having like a essentially work-life balance. So it's important to be um, a good researcher, but uh, it turns out it's also important to have a, um, a kind of a balance in your personal life, whatever that means. Um, you know, um, it's very tempting to just stay in the lab the whole time because it's very exciting, to be honest, right? Um, you, the more you stay there, the more you progress with your research, um, you, get, you get closer to have qu answers to the questions that you've been working on for maybe a year or more. So it's very tempting to spend all your time there. Uh, but from what I, I could grasp from what the laureate said is, well, another hour in the lab may be less efficient than spending an hour with your family or your loved ones or whoever you want to be with or um, doing an activity that you actually enjoy outside of the lab and then coming back with a kind of a fresh mind to work back on that problem. So that may be actually a more efficient way of doing things. Okay. This doesn't mean you don't have to work hard. It's just that, well, um, you can take some time off. It's okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time. Thanks so much. Thanks.